Hey everybody, Donna Woods with Photonic Health and another edition of Health Made Simple. And we are chatting with Jenny Dean of floppycats.com. Welcome back, Jenny. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me again, because I feel like we didn't get to address some of the things that I wanted to address the last time. So I'm excited to be back. Yes. So for those of you that are new or have not seen Jenny's original, um, she is an advocate and a lover of ragdolls, ragdoll cats. And um, in our first interview, we really sort of focused on that, like how she got started in it and all about the breed. Brian and I happened to have two ragdoll cats, and it was just sort of a fluke meeting um, that that I have ragdolls, and and she's like, you know, really into this particular breed, and um, her her website and her blog and everything has really morphed into a gateway for all breeds of cats, right? Yes. And, um. Tell us more about like what you're getting a lot of questions on and whatnot. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I started Floppy Cats 15 years ago last month and it, I grew up with ragdoll cats. And so I wanted to be connected with other ragdoll cat owners, but in the 15 years that Floppy Cats has gone on and in the 15 years that I've had more cat experience, my uh, parents lost both of their cats in 2020 and 2021 um, and I was introduced to a lot of different modalities then. Um, and then I've gone through some issues with one of my cats with feline hypersthesia syndrome. So because of all of that, it's, it's my, my tagline used to be uniting ragdoll cat lovers worldwide. And I'm morphing it to helping cat owners live more harmoniously with their cats. Nice. Um, you know, whether it's, things like the photonic health multi-light that can help with different issues that you have going on or, you know, feeding a raw diet over kibble, whatever it is, um, you know, introducing more scratchers. So your cat stops scratching the couch and where to put those scratchers so they start scratching the couch. That's, I feel better about what I'm bringing to the world when I go to bed at night doing those kind of things. So, um, <laughs> oh, that was one of I mean, I'm laughing because Donna <laughs> taught me how to blur my background because you could see my my Pilates reformer and I was like does that look weird are people gonna wonder about that and now like in Donna's blurred background I saw like an animal <laughs> so it made me <laughs> laugh um so I'm just I'm excited about that so I wanted to talk about how I came to discover your multi-light and then how it's helped me um yeah. but but I'm hoping that you'll you know, interject and say, well, Jenny, that's kind of what it does, but this is really what it does. Cause I, I really don't know entirely what it does. I just know I like it and that right. it works. <laughs> um, yeah. So, this week seems to be the week for cats, by the way, because literally we, we, Brian and I just had a meeting at one of the local cat rescues. They invited us to come in and do a presentation on how red light therapy and light therapy can assist them in um, taking care. They get a lot of feral cats in, so they can't even touch these things mm. and how it can help them. And, you know, because they're injured or they go through surgery and things like that. And so um, I didn't even, you know, I was like, yes, I was like, okay, you know, I, I live life like moment by moment, um, you know, like I'm present in that day. And so then, you know, yesterday I was all about the cat rescue. And then today I was like, oh, more cats. Yay. <laughs> I know because you guys, you know, I get all your emails and there's so much horse information and I watch it all because I'm like, well, I'm, you know, it's all transferable to cats in a way. Right. Um, right. So I'll watch it all. But yes, I'm like, man, they deal with a lot of horses. Um, so I'm glad you're having a cat week. We are having, well, and you know, I, of course, you know, when I walked in yesterday, they've got these two tiny itty bitty kittens that they had just gotten in and um I'm like I could not work in a cat rescue because no. I mm -mm, can't mm. can, I I I I would have a hundred cats I would be the crazy cat lady because I I just you know there's just something extra special about cats you're you know 
I mean, yeah. you know, you're a cat, you're a cat lady. And yeah. Um, so I just, I, we're like, we're going to help support those that rescue however way we can, because I don't, I am not built to do that, do that work. Like I would just take them all home with me. <laughs> So from a cat rescue perspective, I couldn't do it. So I'm so grateful to the people that can, but let's talk about how, how to prevent or what people can do at home so they don't get into situations. So, you know, a lot of the cats were feral cats, but they get some that are um, people just, they're, they're dealing with allergies, they're dealing with skin issues that the people have done everything and literally they, they've run out of money, they've run out of resources and they don't know what to do. So they surrender the cat. And so like, let's talk about, because I know like I'm a huge advocate for proper nutrition. And um, so let's just jump right into that. Cause I think that's one of the big areas that you really talk about or that you get a lot of questions asked um, on your website. Yes. Um, I only like to talk from a personal perspective since I'm not a cat nutritionist and I'm not a vet. Uh, so my cat, Charlie, who is the reason that I was ever introduced to Donna because I was looking for, uh, I was taking him to get cold laser therapy twice a week and he's miserable in the car. He's miserable at the vet. So I was looking for something at home. However, he was on a tablespoon of dry food and then wet food. And so was my other cat. Both of my cats are 13, but I think when I was introduced to you, they were 11. Right. Yep. Okay. So Charlie had a syndrome. He's now like in remission. I don't know what you'd call that from it, but it's called feline hyperesthesia syndrome. And basically they started attacking their bodies, um, especially their tails. Um, Charlie was attacking the base of his tail, like at his pelvis all the time he was restless he couldn't sleep there were so many it was it, my body was in flight or fright mood all the time it was so freaking miserable um and i thought maybe it was caused by allergies i didn't know you know the vet had only seen one other cat with this problem and in, in her practice and that however many years she'd been doing it um and gabapentin is one of the things that they recommend for it which is a drug and I had put Charlie on gabapentin because his old vet wanted him to be like sedated sort of for his um, vet visits and he couldn't walk on it. Um, it didn't make him less anxious. That's what they would say that, oh, it's you know, peaceful and it makes him less anxious. It just made him incapable of moving his body. So I saw the anxiety in his eyes still, but his body wasn't able to do anything about it. And I just thought to myself, that has to be so frustrating. And so then when he got feeling hyperesthesia syndrome and gabapentin was the thing to give him, I was like, no, there's gotta be a different way. Um, so one of the things that I started doing was using the photonic um, health multi-light when I would see like these episodes come about and uh, maybe I should unblur my background so that the light isn't gonna, Hi, do you want to come and say hi? Uh, <laughs> now my isn't working blur background. Okay, so here is um, the light and I would just, you know, shine the red. Man, it doesn't show up red, does it? Um, uh, on Zoom. Right. On the points that Donna told me, it, like literally I got um, the cat or I got the dog book and then you marked or whomever sent it to me. Right, um, yep which points I needed to um, illuminate. And so I, I did all of that and it helped, but it didn't really help until I got the diet under control and I started detoxing his body. So that's the thing is I would hate for someone to think that they can just buy the light and not have to fix anything else that they're doing wrong. And I didn't know I was doing things wrong. I thought I was doing what was best for Charlie and stuff, but no, it wasn't best for him. So I'm past all of that now because I worked with a holistic practitioner who helped me um, 
figure out exactly what his body needed. So now I have the light and I use it for so many other things. And that's what I wanted to talk about because it's such an awesome resource just to have on hand and grab. Um, for example, one of my cats needs a dental, um, Trig, my other cat, and my veterinarian said, hey, if you can get this tartar off his teeth, we can avoid this dental. And I was like, you got it. I'm going to get this tartar off his teeth because I don't want him to be sedated. Right. Well, I got the tartar off the teeth. And when I got the tartar off one of these teeth down here, I popped it off and he had a cavity and it started bleeding and it wouldn't stop bleeding. And I thought, well, I'll give it, you know, a couple hours or something like, you know, it's going to bleed. Um, I checked two hours later and it was still bleeding. I mean, not profusely, you know, but there was still blood there. Right. And so I was like, oh, I'll grab the multi-light and shine <laughs> on that sucker. And I swear it was like done 15 minutes later. Like it was like, oh, I'm, I'm all good. I'm and all so, good. um, hey, come here. So he said he needs a dental because of the cavity, but I was able to right. use the light. And now when he, um, that tooth has to be removed and when it's going to be removed, then I'm shining the light when, when I get him back that day on that right. spot as it um, gets healed. Right. Um, I, Trig also gets these, hold on, I'm going to use, I know, I know it, it's past his time to go Aww. outside. So, that's why, so this is Charlie, but. Hi, Charlie. You know, right here like cats go they can scratch a lot and their allergies and that like it's red right there because yep. or they'll you know bring blood to the surface or have scratch marks this yep. sucker i love it for that you know just i i oh see how he like closes his eyes he's like oh is it light time i love my night time <laughs> um so i like to use it on that kind of stuff too charlie with his feline hypersthesia syndrome sometimes um will also just be kind of anxious at night or I'm like what is what's going on with you like if if it rained that day and he didn't get to go outside he can have a little bit of cabin fever and so I like to use the green light you know on what do you call that I, I say third eye well third eye third eye like from a yeah from energetic perspective but it is the yin tang point in Chinese medicine that's what okay right I'm here. not going to retain that but thank you for filling that in for me um and so I always use that on him. And also because of his history, that's the other thing is you like, as you're working with the light and you see how, you, how each cat responds to the light, like I, I just kind of intuitively know, like I'm going to shine the green light on his pelvis too, because right. that's just always kind of correlated with him. Um, so it's just been a really cool thing. And the reason that I found you guys to begin with was a friend of mine had started using red light therapy on her cats. And I was complaining about, you know, hauling Charlie back and forth for cold laser, which, you know, is supposed, cold laser reduces inflammation. And that's what I was looking for. And, um, and so I just Googled and found, and I'm so glad that I found you guys because there's other companies out there um, that don't have the training that you guys do. Right. Um, I remember, like going through all of the videos that you guys have in the portal so that I really knew what the heck I was doing um, when I was working on them. But also it's awesome that you can't screw it up. Right. But, yeah. you know, that's, the, that's the biggest thing. And, and it was, that was one of the biggest things that we brought to the table yesterday at this cat rescue, because they, I think they've got two and a half veterinarians and and so these vets are overworked and they can't keep up with all of all of the you know their expertise is needed in certain places and the lady the marketing lady was like hey this is cool because you can't screw it up anybody can administer it really and um and the cats get the benefit of it like yes you know so she's like we can have our volunteers, you know, the ones that are taking care of, you know, the post-op or the ones that are coming in with, you know, bad lacerations and, you know, or God only knows what they see. They're like, this is great because, you know, like our big pad system, um, it's preset for 10 minutes. So they're like, we can literally just 
lay it on the cage because these cats are you know they yes have, lay it on the cage hit 10 minutes and they can continue on and the cat's going to get the benefit of you know the anti-inflammatory aspect of it um the relaxation aspect of it um the accelerated healing process all of those yummy things that come along with it and and that's what we love about it like that's the whole reason that we started our business back in 2009 was because anybody can do it yes yeah anybody and i i think that was the biggest relief for me because i had such caregiver fatigue at that point that i i was like wait i can't screw it up and i like that on a cat's body compared to like a horse maybe um you can correct me there but that i was like okay so wait so because you know i in your guys books and stuff like that there's a diagram um of the body and and you're like i think it's there and so you point it there but i don't know who in your company explained to me it illuminates it spreads so you don't have to you know be right on the spot you can be right. you know a couple of centimeters off or whatever so uh, yeah, that was great. And I remember too, so when Charlie was, when we were going through all of his nightmare, um, we were going to our fourth chiropractor and I, I brought the light with me because it was a 30 minute drive and Charlie in the car is like, <laughs> um, so I got there 10 minutes early and I used the light to illuminate him, um, to calm him down. So that's the other thing is like, not only will it calm him down at night, if for any reason he's like hyper, um, but it, and he's 13. So you're like, are you not calming down naturally yet? <laughs> but, <Right. laughs> um, but it calmed him down before that chiropractor too. So uh, yes, I, I love it. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Yay. That's awesome. That's, that is absolutely. That is so cool. I didn't think about the pad system on the, on the crates. That is yeah that's a well, we, game changer well and let's so let's talk about cat so cats are such a different animal than horses or dogs they really really are they're pretty they can be pretty rag dolls are like in a category by themselves and for people that have never had exposure to a rag doll um one of the things that we love about the breed is they're pretty darn personable you know, like they, they're pretty people friendly. Um, and especially with strangers, they don't have the whole stranger danger thing like that a regular cat has, you know, we have a tuxedo cat. We have a tuxedo cat that we rescued and, um, you know, he's got stranger danger. And I have a friend that's been coming to visit for three years and it was, she saw him for the first time, like <laughs> two days ago. And she goes, yeah. Where, where'd that black cat come from? And how long have you had him? And I go, we've, we've had him for nine years. And she's like, no way. And I'm like, oh yeah. And, and so that's a part of rag dolls that we love, but cats have such a different relationship with us, with humans. Um, and one of the things you talk about is strengthening that relationship with your cat. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Um, sure. I don't, I guess the problem with that for me is that it happens so naturally for me. Um, so when I was six years old, my, my aunt got her first ragdoll cat and that cat was the coolest cat, man. Right. He, um, he let you do anything to him. And as a kid, you know, that was awesome. Right. So I begged and begged for, and he, he was raised with German shepherds. I think my aunt had three German shepherds at that time. So like the German shepherds would line up for their treats and, and then Halston, the ragdoll would line up with him. Yes. Um, and he could do everything like, you know, you could be like, give me, give me a kiss. So I, I was just kind of raised around them. I think, um, and it really wasn't until I was in high school at like a high school party or something. And I met someone else's cat that I was like, Oh, Oh, not all cats are created equal. <laughs> no. no, no, I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, now I do have trig is a scaredy cat. Um, my dad always, you know, if my dad comes over to help me with something, he'll be like, don't you have two cats? 
um, he he's making fun of me because he knows that I have two cats. But Trig is never where never anywhere to be found. Um, but Charlie is right there at the door, like greeting you like a dog. Right. Um, but no, like with my mom, I um I helped rehome a cat that I found on the side of CVS when my cats were like, how old were they? Like six months old. So they went to my parents' house because the cat, my vet was concerned, my vet at the time was concerned that they would get, um, uh, what is it? Roundworm. Right. So my, my cats went to my parents' house and lived with my parents' cats, um, for two and a half weeks. So if my mom comes over, Trig immediately comes out and wants to see her. And that's 13 years later. So it just depends. But I think, um, doing stuff like and when you say how to be more personable with your cats or get to know your cats better doing this kind of stuff um this is the photonic health multi-light and i sound like a freaking advertisement um but that that's how i've gotten to know my cats better is by physically working on them i mean the last six months of my i don't want to cry um the last six months of my parents cat's death i was doing ozone therapy on him um, I mean, I already had a tremendous bond with him. He was one of my soulmate cats, but being with him during the, all the treatments that I gave him, and I wish I would have had this thing for him. I would have shined it on those kidneys and been like, right. stay strong cells, stay strong. Right, um, right, exactly. But yeah, I, just doing those kind of things, playing with them. Um, I mean, one of my absolute favorite things is going outside with my cats every day. Okay, I'll admit, like sometimes I'm like, God, why we? Why did I start this? Um, but is just watching them explore and like, wh- what moved over there? I gotta go find out. And just right. talking to them. I mean, now Charlie comes up to me and he's like, "We get a stick, let's play." So I don't know if that helps answer your question, but it very much comes naturally to me to watch a cat. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, I'm glad that you brought up the fact that work with your cats, like give them their own therapy. You, you, you know, yes, there's certain situations that a veterinarian or a chiropractor has to absolutely be involved, but know when your cat is healthy, know what their responses are so that you can catch that serious stuff sooner rather than later. Because yes. if you catch it sooner rather than later, it may not blow up into as a big giant thing. You can catch it a lot sooner. And that's one of the things that I think we haven't necessarily done a great job of articulating, especially in the cat world. Like the horses are really super cool because they are like, you know, like we can like, we work on a lot of horses. I mean, that's just what we do. And they're not my horses. They're strange strangers. Work. You know, the horses are strangers to us. And they're in a heck of a lot of pain sometimes. And we'll walk in and within an hour, like they're like following me around like I am, you know, the best thing since sliced bread and they want to be my best friend forever. And there's something from a physiological perspective when you switch that emotion of being in pain to, oh my gosh, somebody like this is like this, this being is helping me and oh my gosh, they care. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, it just, from a physiological perspective, it totally changes the animal. And yeah. so, you know, we're huge advocates of, but we've also seen it in the horse world. We're huge advocates of know, know your animals, like not just know their name and play with them and pet on them, but like know what feeling good feels like and know what the signs are of not feeling good because each animal is different. And you yes. can express it sooner rather than later. Yes. Yes. And knowing they're uh, sorry for he, Charlie was rubbing his pheromones on the corner of my computer and I'm on this zoom with you on a laptop. And so it started shaking. Right. <laughs> That's yeah, why I started no. laughing. Cause I was like, Oh, Charlie. Um, but yes, like, like the cool thing about something like the multi-light too, is you have to work the body. So you have to feel the body. And then that helps you find like lumps and bumps. If I don't want to find lumps and bumps, but you can find lumps and bumps that way. Whereas if you're just like 
you know, always petting them just along their back, you're not going to feel all those things. And so right. um, I'm also a big advocate of, you know, touching everywhere on their body, especially when they're kittens or puppies. Um, sorry, he's very, this is a bad timing on my part. Woo. I know this is when I go outside. Why is she so slow? Um, <laughs> he's like, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> Come fast, mom. Yes. So <laughs> that's i mean like to to touch their body all over the place and have them get used to that feeling of being touched all over really helps um as well yes i know i i know i i, I yes i've got yes it's, i think there might be a cat out there it's possible it's absolutely um, possible i love that is a box i have in my window so that he won't jump in the window and hurt his back <laughs> So that that is a window, though. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's good, though. I mean, and that's great for our, you know, like if you've got a cat or a dog that can hurt itself, and a lot of animals can by jumping, you know, be proactive. Like put 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 a box in the window so your cat can't get hurt because you really don't want to have to rehab a slip disc on a, on a cat, a dog, a horse, or yourself. Um, no. if you know, and prevention is always the best medicine. Um, yes. And the, uh, the only chiropractor that works for Charlie is 30 minutes away. So it's either the box in the window or a 30 minute drive. <laughs> so that's why I prefer the box in the window. The box in the window. Ab yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. And you also had mentioned like, because we we live in such a techie world, put your phone down. Yes. And yes. spend 15, take your cats outside, spend 15 minutes with, with, with them, not throw your cats outside for 15 minutes and then go find them. Like go be with them. Yes. Um, it's a weird thing because, you know, as a, cat blogger or influencer or whatever you want to call me um i don't want people to put their phone down i want them to be on floppy cats checking it out right <laughs> um, but a lot of times i realize like in the morning what you know i have a terrible habit of grabbing my phone and checking my email before i even get out of bed and when i start when i grab my phone and start checking my email Trig is a little snuggle bunny and he'll jump up on the bed and come snuggle. And oftentimes I'm still checking my email and he's purring in my ear. And I'm like, what are you doing? Put your phone down and enjoy like five minutes of purring. Correct. So yeah, just stuff like that. And I, I'm just as guilty of it as any, anyone else. Correct. Correct. Well, we all are, right? Yeah. Yes. We all are. Mine likes to do that, like right, like as I'm laying down to go to sleep. Yeah. You know, oh. <laughs> and, and I don't, I don't know if it's the breed or not, but he's got the loudest motor on the planet. He's like, and I'm like, Max, really? <laughs> <laughs> but we no. love him. I love him. So he gets some snuggle pet time and then he's happy and then he goes away. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. So it's really interesting. Um, I love the fact that your cats love our multi-light. I do too. Um, and I think, you know, I, I use an animal communicator to talk to my cats about once a month and um, they told her, and this is I'm, we might lose some viewers here because they're probably like, what in the world? Um, but they said, it's really weird to have a light shined into you. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, that's funny. Yeah, it would, would be weird, I guess. Right. But now, I mean, every time that I bring the red light to Charlie, his he closes his eyes. Closes his eyes. Oh, that's yeah. so sweet. Yeah. Yeah, we were we were videotaping actually for the our essential line for our pat the back pad and for, we have a half wrap and um, my other rag doll that I don't talk about a lot she's a female and she's tiny she's only like seven pounds and she is just the sweetest thing on the planet um, like 
I was recording and I had my one terrier sitting right next to me because we were doing a segment on dogs. And like she jumped in my lap and laid right down on the pad system. And I was like, and she, she doesn't do that. Like she, she does not normally do that. Like if we, if we're, you know, we've got lights on all the time. Like, you know, I've got three dogs and three cats and, and so, and horses. And so there's always lights going in my house for somebody. Um, and like, literally like we're, we moved her aside and she just like she was very like we had to actually change our focus on our videotaping I don't know if people call it videotaping anymore I know that, that I do that's all right right videoing um and do a whole segment on her because she absolutely insisted on laying on that pad system right then and there and she laid there for 30 minutes and that's she awesome never, she had never done that before so I love how it intuitive they are and they just know when something they need something and they know when they're good and I'm sure you see that with when you're using the lights on your kitties yes yeah and I'm glad that you mentioned that because I've always I don't have the back pad system but I've wondered if trig would prefer that over the multi-light and the reason I wonder that is because and I, I guess this is important to mention too, if anybody's watching this, it's considering using your lights. Um, Charlie took to the light immediately. Like he was like, yes, bring it on. Um, whereas Trig was like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Um, but he's like that with everything. Like he does not want me to restrain him and hold him in a space. So whereas Charlie and my relationship is a little bit different. And, and so, but now, um, you know, cause I, I was holding trig down to get his tooth <laughs> with right. the light. Um, I started to, to work on the, his gallbladder points because the holistic practitioner we're working with, um, thinks that he has, you know, some gallbladder issues. And so I was doing gallbladder points and by the time we were done, he was full fledged purring. And yep. so if you like, you know, if he allows you to do one point today, try two points tomorrow, like right. just go slow and, and steadily and right. they ended up, you know, being fine with it. And they realize you're, that you're not hurting them. Right. Well, what, what ends up happening is they make that brain body connection. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, because cats are like probably the most sensitive creatures to energy than anything. And light is a form of energy. And so when we first introduced them to it, they're like, and some of them are like, oh my gosh, I can't, I don't know. I, this is a lot of energy. I just don't know what to do with it. And so, you know, like you said, you do one point today, two points tomorrow, you know, and eventually they're like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. That feels good. And then, like you said, they start purring. We actually, we don't see it a lot in horses, but every once in a while we'll see it in um, a horse that has like a lot of pain especially like if they're super ulcery mm -hmm. and they cannot stand being touched by anything mm -hmm. um literally we'll do like two point like they'll only let us do points because you're obviously not going to argue with a 1200 pound animal mm -hmm. um but it from a the, uh, the human perspective we want to fix them we want to do all of this today and um, what we've learned over the years um, is that sometimes just doing two, one point or two points a day is way more effective than if you had done all of them all at one time. And the beautiful thing is, is it takes like 30 seconds. I know. 30 seconds out of your day or a day out, you know, a minute out of your day for your animal. And that's a heck of a lot less time than a 30 minute car ride back and forth to your vet plus the time at the vet. Yes. Yes. Plus the stress, um, for both parties, the cat and the human. Correct. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. No, it, it was huge for me because it was so stressful. I mean, I, I even tried to work it where I, I found a, a vet that was even closer that had cold laser. And the reason like you can't have cold lasers that cost like 40 grand for, for a laser. Right. So, um, I'd even found a, a, a vet that would just 
treat him for the cold laser. So it was only a five minute drive, but it was still so miserable. And I never could predict if he was going to get angry or not. So correct, um, correct, correct. correct. Yeah. Whereas at home, he's not going to get angry. Like he's, he's in his flow and he's happy. And um, it's looking at me right now. Like I am not happy. I'm You're not I'm outside. Not. I'm not happy. I'm ready to go outside. Yes. But I know what you mean by that brain body connection, because I had not taken Trig to the chiropractor um, until this year, but Trig, Charlie with feline hyperesthesia syndrome is very similar to what you described the, the horse that you can't even touch. Like that's very similar to how Charlie was with his feline hyperesthesia syndrome. So he could not get acupuncture, like acupuncture just like he just exploded. Um, but Trig could. And so I always, you know, and he still does get acupuncture. However, um, when I took him to get chiropractor work, he was expecting the, the needle. And so, cause you know, she's feeling on him, like the acupuncturist would to find that spot. And, and he's, you know, anticipating the needle and then she would, you know, adjust him. And he was like, who's this lady? Like, I like this one. Like, can I come back for this? So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like when they make the connection of, and that's why I think like horses start following you around. Like this lady made me feel good, really right. good. Right. Um, right. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Awesome. Yay. Well, Thank you for being on again. And um, everybody, please feel go to floppycats.com. Um, Jenny is a great resource. Um, is if you have cats and you're dealing with anything, she's got a lot of experience and she also has a lot of connections. So if she can't help you directly, she can at least point you in the right direction of where to go. Um, and you talk a lot about diet and raw diet and kibble and kibble is carbs and like we, we could go on and on. Right. So. Yes. Yes. And because of Flappy Cats being around for 15 years, I have a pretty good, decent face of Facebook group. So right. a lot of times, you know, if I don't have an answer or if I can't send you to a place where I think you can find the answer, um, I'll suggest going on the Facebook group. And if you don't have Facebook, then, you know, I can post for you, but right. that's been an awesome resource for people too. Yes. I love that. And community is this community is awesome. Like every, yes. Individually, we might be smart collectively. We're way smarter. Right. And sky's the limit. Sky's the limit for sure. So yes. thank you again for being on. I sure appreciate it. And thank um, you give your kitties a big kiss for us at Photonic Health and um, we'll catch up with you on another session. Okay. Thank you. And I hope that they're like before and after photos from the cat rescue with the lights. Yeah. I think that'll be so cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for having me. Bye.